Uh, I could listen to this music for hours. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Bandit Thieves. Last time, we made our way up to the Great White North of Canada to take on John Basson and his train empire. We did some cabin crimes, we got the location of three clockwork parts, which are all bolted to the front of each of his trains, as well as we got all the clue bottles and managed to break into the safe and get the music box gadget. Today, we are going to be heading off with Sly, mostly because we only have Sly to do. Yeah, we do have a mission with Bentley, but it actually, uh, the way this level is set up is you actually do have to do preparations for the Iron Horse heist before you are able to play as the character who goes into the Iron Horse and seeing as how Bentley is going to suit up and jump into the, to the first Iron Horse, we have to save him for last, unfortunately. However... We did come across a lot of shiny good things out in the wild last time, so I figured let's sell it for a mint. And unfortunately, it is not enough to get Murray's Berserker Charge yet. But after we get some of the treasures and maybe some more things off the guards, we should be able to get it easy. So, anyways, back on out here with Sly. We've got two missions, actually. First mission is all the way over there on the far side by the cabin John Basama was in, which is the Spice in the Sky. And also, there's a friend in need over there by the cabin up on the cliff. I'm actually going to go over and do Spice in the Sky first. I feel like it would just be a much more, like, coherent thing to do, given how a friend in need starts. So, it would make the most sense to do Spice in the Sky first. And I want to get this treasure. This guy would stop going all over the place. Ooh, a ruby. Yeah, once you get to this uh, part of the game where it's more gems and stuff you would find out in like a mining town and such like this, you can kind of uh, get a better idea of what the guards have in their pocket before they, uh, before you're able to steal from them. Also, I did not realize that the transport over there would not see me if I'm hanging onto the side of the train. I always figured that since I was going through the lights, it would see me no problem. Oh well. Anyways, here's my stop. Ooh, and you also have a shiny in your pocket. What do you have, dear sir? That I just screwed up because he hit me! And you you want to actually be kind of careful when going out on the frozen lake. You can kind of see, like, the edge of it where it's the safe zone, but then uh, where it's a lot whiter and more snow-covered, it's the unsafe zone. Because, as you saw, the ground was breaking out underneath us because the ice is kind of thin right there. I'm wait for this guy to pass so I can get his treasure. I think he had... Oh, he's got a... looks like a gold ring. No, that's money. Oh, he's got a sapphire. Nah, money is money. Alright. There's the briefing location. Let's just glide on down over to it and see what we gotta do. Okay, Sly. We need to break into the Iron Horse trains. But the only way in, through the caboose, is locked. To blow the locks off, you'll need to collect the ultra-unstable denatured spice gas from those balloons floating above town. How am I supposed to get up there to collect the spice gas? Murray's already commandeered this ice plane. Jump on its strut, and he'll fly you up to a good paragliding altitude. Oh, and strap on a special vacuum backpack. It'll automatically collect the spice gas after you pop the balloon. Sounds like fun. Once you've collected enough gas, you'll have to land directly on the train's caboose. Why directly on the caboose? Denatured spice gas is very unstable at lower altitudes. Unless you land on the caboose, you won't have time to get the gas tank to the lock before it blows up. So you're saying I either land on the caboose or get blown to bits? That's correct. Chemistry can be a harsh mistress. No kidding, Bentley, especially seeing as how it's basically an instant detonation if we miss the caboose anywhere. Also, that was a sick 360 Murray just did right there. Or 180. You know what I mean. So, a bit of history with this mission. I honestly thought that I was missing something going in here because Bentley says you need to strap on a special vacuum backpack to collect the spice. And I thought, oh, there was a... There was a uh, gadget I was supposed to get back in the safe house before I was able to get it, and I just missed the certain amount of balloons. I'm going to die. Awesome. 
Oh, it actually saves you if you just land on the caboose. It just slides like, eh, that's not enough spice. I gotta get more. I actually never noticed that. I thought it was just gonna be an instant detonation the second I land without having a full tank of spice. So, anyways, back to the story. So, I didn't know that the mission itself gave you the vacuum backpack, and I thought it was a gadget that you had to buy from the thief net to, you know, have for the mission itself. So, what I did before Sly even took off in the plane is I quit the mission, walked all the way back to the safe house, went to the thief net, got very confused for a good while as to why I couldn't find the vacuum backpack, and was wondering if I even bought it in mass when I was buying gadgets for the gang. And then walked all the way back there just to realize that, oh, the game actually gives you the backpack to begin with. You didn't have to go ahead and buy it by yourself. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is I was a very dumb kid. Get back to the ice plane. Two more cabooses to blow up. Also very convenient that it was going right by the plane as soon as uh, we detonated the lock on it. Here we go again. Once again, with the six, uh, sick 180. All right. Uh, now we can't land on that train anymore because if we do, I think even if we land on a caboose, that then the gas will detonate inside our little backpack right here. So we have to land on a train that has a caboose that we still need to blow the lock on. So we got the one going through town, and we got the one that goes up the mountain. Tank should do it. I think I'm gonna go for the mountain one this time because it's actually one of the more annoying the trains to hit. Find a and try for a Especially with all the altitude that I have, I think I should be able to land on it easily. Maybe. If those eagles have anything to say about it. I think they're like the planes back in Prague where if you accidentally fly into their flight path, they actually will hit you, hurt you, and also probably get you killed by, by the spice. All right. Huh, I think. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Even if you do the spire jump onto the the strut right there, slice like, I need to get on it. Oh wait, no, I need to get off. Okay, now I'm back on. It's a fun, it's a really fun mission. I really do enjoy it a lot. All right. All we got left is the one that goes through town. So let's just stick to the spice balloons over here. Yep. I kind of wish that they could have, you know, given the background a little bit more flair, but I guess they just needed something to just feel like a, a cold, desolate outline, just because you go so high that you can see where the border cuts off between the the background uh, painting and the, the level itself. And just drop off right here, and we'll end it off right in town. Also, that explosion should have totally consumed Sly. Yes, you guys did it! All the iron horse trains are unlocked! Alright, and with that, job complete. So, since we don't really have to worry about the train for a while, uh, do you have anything in your pocket? What is going on with your chest, buddy? Uh, fine, I have to. Ooh, and I'm glad I did. All right, let's head on over to the cabin and see what our friend in need, uh, but has in need. Sly, it's, it's awful. I can't believe it. Slow down, Bentley. What happened? Murray, he went out looking for a snack and got captured by Inspector Fox. Carmelita? She's here? Don't worry, Bentley. I know how to handle her. But I don't know where she's locked up Murray. I'm used to having all the bags. Calm down. Carmelita's not cruel like the Contessa. I'll follow her without being seen. She's bound to check on Murray sooner or later. Okay, that's... That's a good plan. Just don't get caught too. I don't want to be alone again. God, that, that, that really hits hard with Bentley be, being so scared that he's going to lose both his friends again. Of course, we both know Sly will never let Carmelita take him alive. 
<laughs> He'd spend more time just messing with her than he would actually trying to make sure that she doesn't capture him. But yes, uh, Carmelita actually makes an appearance in the level. This is the first time she actually makes an appearance in like a level proper, and unfortunately only shows up in this level. I kind of wish that they did more with her, uh, because it's actually a pretty fun thing to do. She's hostile to anything and everything in the level. Guards, uh, wildlife, the gang themselves, she is basically her own faction in this. Uh, she can basically one-shot almost every guard in the game. I think she's also capable of taking care of the bear as well. She, I think it takes a little bit more of a struggle for her to take out the bear. I think it's like three to five shots with a shock pistol to take it out, whereas with basically every single guard out here, it's only one shot. Even flashlight guards are powerless against her. You usually can tell where her line of sight is going to be because, uh, well, her shock pistol has a little flashlight on it, and it's a different from the guards, which I guess she's going with the more LED light instead of the soft light, which, uh, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it, and she's turning around. Yep. I also like how close she is to the safe house, just like, hmm, I'll find those Cooper gang one of these days. Oh, what? I'm right outside where they've been stashed. They stashed themselves to the clockwork parts and all their ill-gotten gains. Oh, well. Right, at least I got a coin out of that. Alright. Now, as soon as we get over here... The best thing to do for this segment is to just climb up onto the power lines and just follow her from above. She can't see you while you're above, like most guards can, but you can also still keep a good line of sight of her. Plus, she has such a really roundabout way of going to find Murray. It's like, she decides to go over there, skip across the pond, and then go up this little hill where you can see the big guy is stashed. And I'll just stay right here. Okay, no, she can't even take out uh, the goose guards. And for whatever reason, she does like this little cough every time she takes out an enemy. Hey, criminal, you doing okay in there? I know it's tight, but you won't get shocked if you hold still. I'm okay. And thanks for that bag of jelly beans. I was starving. Won't be long now. Once I bust the other members of your gang, we'll get out of here. I'm grateful for the jelly beans and all, but aren't you on the outs with Interpol right now? I'm an honest cop. Busting the Cooper gang will prove my innocence and show everyone that Constable Neela set me up. You mean Captain Neela? I hear she got promoted. Whatever. Just sit tight. I'm going to look for your pals. Murray, I've come to break you out. Fat chance. This thing is triple padlocked and Inspector Fox is carrying all the keys. Come on, buddy. You know I'm an expert at pickpocketing. She's tough, Sly. If you manage to get a key, you'd better run for it. Carmelita's sure to notice and chase after you. Leave her to me. This seems really unsanitary or really dangerous using a power substation as a makeshift prison cell. Also incredibly cramped too. Anyways, Carmelia has three keys on her. We just basically gotta pickpocket them, but every time we pickpocket a key, we're gonna need to make a run for it because she will notice that you, her key gets pickpocketed. I'm gonna wait for her to take care of this goose real quick. After his goose is cooked, we're just gonna snag ourselves a key. And hitch a ride. What? My or not. Geez. Oh, wait. Oh, there goes that plant. Oh, here's a ride. It just becomes a, a big comedic comedy of airs chase of what is she doing? Well, that goose is trying to take care of her. I don't know. I'm I'm a pretty good runner. I think I can run forever. It is my duty as a thief, after all. 
So while we're going around and getting the other two keys from Carmelita, well, other one key at this point now, I want to talk about a pretty funny thing that happened a uh, past time of me playing this game that was on stream, which you should go check out, by the way. Selfless plug right here. Uh, basically, what you can do, you can actually glitch Carmelita into a position where you can still steal a key from her while everybody's after me at this point. Uh, you can glitch her into a spot where she will basically be knocked into a spot she can't run or, or get out of. But at the same time, she, uh, she basically stays there the entire time shaking her fist at you and cursing the ver your very existence when it comes to missing him. See ya! Uh-oh. Oh dear, did I let her get hit by a train? <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Instant game nope. over. No, nope, she's still up there. Although... Oh no! Oh no! I think I knocked her into a spot where she's per- Oh god. Yeah, I broke her AI! Oh no. She's perpetually stuck in that one spot right there. <laughs> Can you still pickpocket her? I don't know. Oh, she's I... just shaking her fist at you. <laughs> oh, nope. I wonder what happens at the transports. No, it's not going to happen. Oh well. Fortunately, I don't see any trains coming nearby, which would have been nice to have a little exit strategy. Actually, one's coming through town right now. Let's see how long I can hold out for until it shows up. Ooh. There you go. Here's my ride. Baby. Slide. Come on, get the key, get the key. All right, my righty's here. You can't sneak up on me. I don't know. I sure can't try. All right. Well, while she dances with the moose down there, I'm just gonna make my way back to Murray. Her insults are great, by the way. Okay, uh, you don't really have a shiny in your pocket, but you do got some money on you. Uh, where did she go? Oh, there she is. Wait. Is she stuck? I think she's stuck. Oh, uh, no. Oh no. I thought she got caught on a bear trap for a second. That's why she wasn't moving in. Oh, no. Oh, now she's shaking it next to the transport. I think she is stuck now because of the bear trap. It's like, all right, look right, look left, and surrender. That's really weird, but also pretty funny, I have to say. All right. Let's make our way over to Murray, free the big guy, and head off and get prepped for our first train heist. Just sneak on over here, ignore the guard, and Murray, you are free. Thanks, pal. I was getting a Charlie horse standing in that box. My pleasure. You know how I love to mess around with Carmelita. Yeah, that's weird. See you back at the safe house. Hey, who's that hippo? I, I love that interaction with Slime Murray. It's probably my favorite in the entire game. It's just like, it, Sly's like, yeah, you know how much I love to mess with her. And Sly's, and Murray's just basically like, yeah, that's weird. But yes, now after we're done with that mission, Carmelita's basically out and about on the field permanently for the rest of the entirety of this chapter. 
her little patrol pattern usually consists of the little power station up there that she turned into a prison a little bit outside town and then she patrols like right around by the cabin and then just basically has this entire section covered and also is having a hard time getting around that train now we can get Bentley and we can start our first train heist however I want to head back up here to the top of the mountain because if you remember from last time there was a treasure sitting up here and it's the only treasure that's like you get so I might as well go snag it and avoid the eagle and make our way back to the safe house one thing I like to do in this chapter is basically go to each of the treasures as each member of the game so get one with Bentley get one with slime get one with Murray just because it's a fun little challenge I find myself doing and I might do it during the LP we'll see but we're not going to be able to get the other two treasures until we get to the next set of the heist because, well, once we're done with Bentley, that's basically it for this setup phase. But, however, the Crystal Bell should be enough. Oh, no, wait. Uh, we can't actually say the Crystal Bell until the very end. Uh, we'll get the Berserker Charge for Murray right now. Go get Bentley. You know, thinking about how basically every guard and character in this game is an animal, that's kind of dark, especially in future games where there are like sentient like character characters that are bears. Anyways, I want to go ahead and equip the hover pack for Bentley because I want to show it off because it's one of my favorite gadgets for him altogether. Basically, what the hover pack allows Bentley to do is get a little bit of an extra boost to his jumps. You'll be able to fly around with him for a little bit, get some extra altitude, be able to outmaneuver guards, and also get to places that Bentley normally couldn't reach. And you know, also have Bentley be probably the second most vertical character next to Sly when it comes to maneuvering around levels. And that's why I really like it. Another reason why I really love the hover pack is basically because it actually does appear on Bentley. And I think it's like the only gadget that actually ever appears on to the character once you buy it for them. Which is a really nice addition. It's stuff like that in games that I really do enjoy. And I like that little attention to detail. Okay, awkward cut aside. Sorry about that. I had a bit of a technical issue come up when I was making my way over to the location for the heist. But it should be fixed now. And let's make our way over and start this train heist. According to this timetable. Iron Horse number one should be passing by any time now. I, I see it. It's moving awfully fast. Just jump on the caboose and go in through the hatch. Piece of cake. Piece of cake, he says. He's the acrobatic one. I'm just a tech savvy one. Anyways, it's best to have the rocket pack here just because it helps you get onto the train easier. You want to get into the caboose before the train goes into the tunnel. Otherwise, you fail the mission and have to retry getting onto the train again. Now, welcome to one of the reasons why I love this chapter so much. Basically, each setup segment for the, the main heist itself is a heist in of itself. Or, I should say, it has a heist in of itself. I consider each time that we go into one of the Iron Horses to get a clockwork part a, a heist, just because, well, that's what it is. And you can also get a lot of money in here. Uh, I would say maybe Bentley's is probably my favorite out of all of them just because you don't really ever get a heist like this with Bentley ever again in the game or even to begin with in the game. I'm surprised those lasers did not hit me. They looked like they were about to. Anyways, just hop on over here. There's a lot of laser defenses on these trains for Bentley, which I guess makes sense in the long run because they can't really have a lot of acrobatic stuff for Sly. Anyways, make your way to the top of the train, run across, avoid the eagles. They are really wanting some turtle soup right about now. And we can head back into this train car to smash some of the barrels inside here, grab ourselves some money, and, you know, disrupt the operation even more than we already are. 
as well as destroy the infrastructure because, of course. And I'll throw the health extractor. I don't think I can hit that guy up there. One thing I really like to try to do with Bentley's train car is take out all the guards on here with it. So it's him, suck him, bomb him, get away from him. Just because you can get a lot of coins for these barrels out here. And I'm surprised. Okay, no, he didn't hear it. Okay, he heard that one, though. Just throw that out there. There we go. Suck him into a pocket dimension where he will never see the light of day ever again. Surprised those didn't have any money in them aside from that one barrel. Ah oh, well. Second verse, same as the first. Throw a health extractor out right there. We shall put this guy to sleep. Absorb that guy and bomb that part of the train car. Put that right there. It is kind of finicky. I get. I guess it tries to account for you know the the wind blowing your bombs away to throw your bombs and such. Just keep breaking these. Breaking all these. And head on out here for the next outdoor challenge, which is our first interaction with a flashlight guard. And a couple of reinforcers that I don't think that these guys ever carry megaphones on them. And as much as I would like to take these guys out, I really can't because I can't uh, take into account of the wind. Let's try right here. That should do it. There we go. And now we just hit him with a sleep dart and put him to sleep. Got another layers of defense system right here. Just keep pop, 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 hover, pop, and hover. Now last but not least is the final car before we get to the engine. And as you can see, we just have to slide our way across here, but oh no, there's a flashlight guard, two flashlight guards, and they're both watching the little side paths. I did not notice this the first time playing through this, so I did a really awkward thing where I stood here with it like a weird angle, threw a bomb out to distract them, and then just basically just went crazy to do my best to take care of these guys before they could finish me off. But what you're really supposed to do is notice this spot right here is a little uh, lower than the other ones. Up, up on here. Up, up down here. Sneak away past between these two guys. Do some property damage or not. And grab ourselves a lung. Outstanding. Chalk up one strange robot organ for us and one less iron horse train for John Bassan. Things are going great. We've already stolen one of Jean Bassan's free clockwork parts. However, Iron Horse 2 and 3 are going to be a little tougher to crack. First, I'll need to hop aboard Iron Horse 2 and do a little preemptive RC chopper strike to clear out the air defenses. Once cleared, it'll be up to Sly to work his magic in the interior to get at that second clockwork lug. Murray, you'll need to trap some of the local bear cubs in order to unlock a nearby hand car. We're gonna need it to catch up with Iron Horse number three. But don't worry, the cubs won't be hurt. Although I can't say the same for the guards. <laughs> <laughs> 